I'm going to bring you a vision of what it looks like to the 1%. And I'm not going to put words in their mouths. I'm going to quote their words in context extensively to show you what they think about us. This is the view from the 1% in what should be one of the most infamous memoranda in the world, a Citicorp 2005 document. Now this went to their private wealth group, the private banking group. And to get private banking, basically you have to have an income or wealth of a million dollars. Right? So this is the elite of the elite that this goes through. And you have to envision the jolly tone of all this. In early September, we introduced the idea that the U.S. is a plutonomy, a concept that generated great interest from our uh, clients. What's a plutonomy? A plutonomy is when you have rule by the wealthy and where the wealth of the nation is immensely disproportionately goes to a very small group. Citigroup's wealthy clients were thrilled to hear that the U.S. was ascending to this exalted state. This is where their definition of a plutonomy, where economic growth is powered by and largely consumed by the wealthy few. So they send this message out to their wealthiest <coughs> clients who respond with great interest to this idea. Now, note that small idea that the economic growth is supposedly powered by the wealthy few. So you already have this great lie that I said that starts everything, the great lie that they are somehow a unique productive class. The top 1% of households in the U.S., about 1 million households, accounted for about 20% of overall U.S. income in 2000. By the way, since that time, this has gone up considerably slightly smaller than the share of the income of the bottom of 60% of households put together. So that top 1% back in 2000 is equivalent roughly to the bottom 60% in terms of income. And again, this is much worse since then. That's about 1 million households compared with 60 million households both with similar slices of the income pie. Notice the exclamation point. Clearly, the analysis of the top 1% of U.S. households is paramount. We don't even have to analyze you folks anymore. You don't count. Only the 1% count. And once you get to wealth, which is far more unequal than income, this is the disparity. The top 1% of households also account for 33% of net worth greater than the bottom 90% of households put together. The top 1%, and this is worse since these statistics were computed, more than the bottom 90%. It gets better. You see that phrase? <coughs> It gets better, or worse, depending on your political stripe. So tell me, what political stripe delights in the 1% having everything? The 1%. <laughs> exactly so. All right, so they are delighted. It gets better, right? Remember the current campaign about it gets better? They have their own campaign about it gets better. We'll get even wealthier. Okay, the top 1% of households <coughs> account for 40% of financial net worth, more than the bottom 95% of households put together. So that stock market stuff, that almost exclusively went to the top 1%. But it really didn't go to the top 1% at Citicorp analysts helpfully tell us, it really went to the one-tenth of the one percent. City then warns that focusing on the top one percent masks the fact that their share of the pie is, quote, almost entirely driven by the fortunes of the top one-tenth of one percent. 
roughly 100,000 households. The city goes on to praise the changes in taxes and the changes in senior executive compensation that have driven the tremendous increase in the share of the pie taken by these 100,000. And it coins a phrase. Okay, so one of our family rules is you can never compete with unintentional self parody. <laughs> right? If we had written this stuff, people would have said this is absurd, class bashing, da 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 da. You know, they really do think this way. When they're writing and talking to themselves, this is how they really talk about us. Right? So they have a wonderful phrase that they've minted, the managerial aristocracy. Remember, they're writing this to the managerial aristocracy, which obviously has no sense of humor. Right? <laughs> and no sense, absolutely no sense of morality or any of that stuff in any of the major religions about difficulty in getting into heaven. Right? So, while in the early 20th, uh, 20th century, capital income was the big chunk for the top one-tenth of one percent of households, the resurgence in their fortunes since the mid-80s was mainly from... Now, what if we wrote this phrase? <laughs> Oversized salaries, right? This is how they think about it themselves, as oversized salaries. The rich in the U.S. went from coupon flipping, dividend receiving rentiers, to a manager managerial aristocracy. And note the next word, indulged by their shareholders. <laughs> You know, you don't even have to go to the, old, the Catholic Church in the old days to buy an indulgence. <laughs> this is really quite wonderful. <laughs> so it's a managerial aristocracy. Modern executive compensation has produced not just the 1%, but the one-tenth of 1%. This is the C-suite is taking virtually all of the gains in wealth, even from the people lower down in the food chain. Remember that Bastiat warned that a moral code would arise glorifying the plunder. Q City Corp. <laughs> Society and governments need to be amenable to disproportionately allow slash encourage the few to retain that fatter profit share. The managerial aristocracy, like in the Gilded Age, the Roaring Twenties, and the Thriving Nineties, needs, needs, this is like when your 12-year-old daughter comes and tells you she needs, <laughs> to commandeer a vast chunk of that rising profit share, either through capital income or simply paying itself a lot. <laughs> It needs to commandeer this. Commandeer is a word you use when you seize something you're not entitled to. Right? And what they need, therefore, is a philosophy to be brooded about by those schlubs uh, in the media and such who are stooges for the 1% that says, oh yeah, you're okay, good. Outside income, vast chunk, by simply paying yourself a lot, Sounds good to us, <laughs> all right? And what's the great excuse for this that Citicorp offers? Oh, well, these are brave entrepreneurs taking risk. Unlike the rest of us who don't have any risks in our lives, 